I'm going to be totally honest, shooting in low light conditions kind of sucks. Underexpose the shot, there's no bringing it back. Expose it perfectly, and it might still be full of noise. You need to have your settings dialed. You need to know your camera inside and out, and you need to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram, at Josh. Okay, the last one really doesn't matter. Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're all doing awesome. Today, we're talking about shooting in low light, getting clean, noise-free video in low light. Let's get into it. I don't care if you shoot Canon, Nikon, Sony, because yes, even you Sony shooters have limits, I think. Whatever you shoot on, these tips are gonna help you get cleaner footage when shooting in low light, when that sun goes down and you start cranking that ISO. Hopefully these tips help you out. No lollygagging in this video, let's get right into it. So the first tip for getting better footage when there's not a lot of light is find a light source. Yes, the best way to shoot in low light is don't. If you're shooting in the dark, your first instinct should not be to just start bumping that ISO. Look around your environment, see what light is available just naturally. Maybe one side of the street is brighter than the other. Or in the intro of this video, I decided to park my car under a street light rather than in the shadows a couple parking spots down. Heck, it could be as simple as just walking by a neon sign to light your subject a little better, get him to pop away from the darkness around them. And if there's really nothing around you, maybe you're shooting just away from light in general, there's nothing there, then bring your own light. It could be something really small, it could be just a big light that you're gonna blast everywhere, but just because it's dark outside doesn't mean you can't have a light source. A light source is gonna help you keep that ISO way down, a little bit is a lot better than no light. Plus, having some sort of light source casts shadows, even if they're super subtle and soft, and that adds a lot of depth to your shot. Having light is really the most important part in shooting in low light. Ironic, I know. All right, and my next tip is gonna be shoot with a fast aperture lens. Stay away from f4, stay away from f5.6. You wanna be shooting down at f2.8, f2, f1.8, maybe even lower. If you're on a budget, there's no lens that's more legendary and kind of renowned than the 50 millimeter f1.8. You can get this lens for just about any camera. It doesn't matter what brand you're shooting on, and it's gonna give you really awesome results in low light. The 50 millimeter f1.8 is cheap, fast, everybody loves it. Now, my personal favorite lens for shooting at night is the Sigma 35 millimeter f1.4 Art. It's f1.4, which is even faster than the Nifty 50, and it's super sharp, it has awesome bokeh. 35 millimeters is a great focal length, but it is a lot more expensive. For reference, f1.4 actually lets in four times as much light as f2.8 and eight times as much light as f4. If a lot of your lenses stop at f4, that might work totally fine during the day, but if you slap on an f1.4 lens when you're shooting at night, it's gonna feel like a totally different camera. The difference is massive. All right, the next thing that's vital if you're shooting in low light is nailing exposure in camera. Now, when you're shooting during the day, there's tons of light, you're shooting at ISO 100 or 200, you can get away with being a little sloppy with exposure. You might underexpose a shot, heck, you could intentionally be underexposing to keep detail in the highlights, and that's totally fine, the image is probably recoverable. But at night or in low light, you can't really do that. If you underexpose at night, there's no recovering that shot. Odds are you're already pushing your camera to the limit, it's just not capturing enough detail in those shadows in the dark parts of the image to bring them up in post. If you don't trust your eyes or your monitor, use a tool like a histogram or false color if your camera has it. But if you're shooting at night, especially if you're shooting in a log format, you don't wanna be underexposing your shots. Okay, and another way to let a little bit more light into your camera is shoot at the lowest frame rate possible. So for most people, that's gonna be 24 frames per second. The general rule when shooting video is you need your shutter speed to be double your frame rate. So if you shoot at 60 frames per second, your shutter speed is about one over 125. If you shoot 24 frames per second, your shutter speed's one over 50. What this means is if you're shooting at a higher frame rate, like 60 frames per second, or 120 frames per second, you're letting less light in, so you have to bump that ISO, which means grainier footage. 
This means you want to avoid slow motion, especially in those super dark areas. You do not want to have a shutter speed of 1 over 125 or 1 over 250. Now, if you kind of use slow motion as a crutch to smooth out your footage or make your shots look cinematic, my recommendation is use another tool, get a glide cam or a gimbal, that's my preference, or even a tripod. You don't want to be slowing down your footage if you don't have to. So shooting at 24 frames per second with your shutter speed double your frame rate is going to let the most light in. Okay, and we might get some heat for this one, but my next tip is use a slower shutter speed than you're supposed to. We are breaking the 180 degree rule. Let me explain. So when you're shooting video and it's super bright out, it's not uncommon for people to crank their shutter speed a little, especially if they don't have an ND filter to get the proper exposure. When it's super dark out, my trick is to actually lower your shutter speed, slow it down to maybe one over 40, one over 30, one over 25 in extreme cases. Now, is this technically incorrect? Absolutely, but sometimes it makes a lot of sense. So the longer you make that shutter speed, the more light you're letting in and the more motion blur you're introducing. That's sort of the trade-off. So if there's a lot of movement and you start lowering that shutter speed, it's gonna look like you're filming from a drunk person's point of view. But if there's not a lot of movement in your shot and you're filming something relatively stationary, like a building or a person who's not moving too much, this is kind of a neat trick. When you think about it, if there's not movement or at least not very much, you can essentially just let in twice as much light, cut your ISO in half, kind of a neat trick, but be careful, don't abuse it, especially if there's movement in the shot or no one's gonna know what's going on. Now, sometimes you're gonna do everything right and your camera just can't handle the situation you're shooting in. There's one sorta of last resort trick and that's denoising your footage. Now, what a lot of people don't know is there's an option, at least on Canon cameras, and I'm assuming most cameras, to denoise your footage in camera. In Canon cameras, I think it's called high speed noise reduction or something. High ISO speed noise reduction. That's what it's called. Now, I think by default, when you get your camera, this is going to be on standard. If it got switched to low or off, you might want to change that and that can make a huge difference. But if I know I'm pushing my camera sort of beyond its limit, I switch it over to high. Alternatively, and sort of the more correct way to do this is denoise with a software in post. The thing is, this is going to slow your computer way down. So depending on the project, this might not be as easy as just doing it in camera. Typically doing it in camera is worse, it's less precise, but it's going to save you a lot of time in post, so just kind of decide that based on the project. And that's all I got, so hopefully this encourages you a little bit to shoot in those darker situations that you normally shy away from. It can be challenging, but it's a lot of fun when you get some good looking footage at night. Also, remember that a little noise in your footage isn't the end of the world. I know some of you just started hyperventilating, but it's true. No one cares as much as you, generally speaking, so don't worry if there's a little noise in your shots. It'll be okay. And that's all I got. As always, if you liked the video, be sure to like it. If you have any questions, have any comments, hit up that comment section down below, and have fun, stay creative, and I'll see you all in the next one.